Names of the victims of the Connecticut massacre are emerging, and so too are the tributes to the children and those teachers who were killed, many of those children just six or seven years old. School friends are now having to come to terms with what's happened, never mind, of course, all family and uh, friends of the family and the wider community as well. Well, let's talk to child psychologist Dr Howard Fine, who's here in the studio. Good morning to you. Good morning. Let's talk, first of all, if we can, about the impact on the surviving children. Are they young enough, perhaps, to be able to emerge from this one way or another without being too damaged? Well, we'd hope so. Fortunately, children are a lot more resilient than adults, and they have a lot less baggage to carry. Uh, but a lot of it is really about how the support network around them holds them. And there's different layers that we need to consider around this. One of them would actually be the media's responsibility in this, not to over-sensationalise the event, not to re-traumatise the children. And so maybe there is a responsibility to pull back a little bit and allow the children to cope better and for the community to cope within itself. I mean, what, one child we heard from yesterday being interviewed by uh, American reporters was sort of saying, you know, they were hiding in cubby holes so the animal couldn't get in. I mean, clearly they've been told there was an animal in the school or something of that. I mean, is that the sort of myth that can be, for a while at least, perpetuated? Yes, I think there's a risk within that story. If, for anybody who experiences a traumatic event, if the story isn't correct, a child will put together a narrative which might not necessarily be correct around the event, and so that can actually traumatise them. And what we try to do is to make sense of the event. So we could revisit the event and make the story as accurate as possible, not in too many gory details for the younger children, but so that they can understand it better, they can make meaning of the event. I think what's very nice for the community at the moment is they are making some meaning out of it, and they're taking some of the positive aspects by creating some heroes around it. So it has more of a, a positive story, a positive narrative, and hopefully from this, actually, rather than the, the community being traumatised, they can have some aspects of post-traumatic growth, some resilience within this. So they've got a positive message, message from a rather difficult event. It's interesting you talk about the, the effect on the community. Because this is, is such a major event, can there be an effect on the, the national psyche in the United States as well? I think there's a risk. Again, I think they, they can probably... There's a risk of them going over the top and, and putting hard rules in place. Um, ideally, we need to help the community manage first. If we look at, at how children live, or how children live, initially they, they live as, well, we see them in a bubble. But a child is often part of a family, a child is part of a class, part of a school, part of a larger community. So if we can help the community cope first, they can support the individual families, the families can support the children. So we're taking a, a top-down approach for this. So rather, everyone, you've, the more shared... Um, care that we have, the more of a shared experience we have, the better the community can cope, the families and the child. It's interesting, isn't it, that we're looking at how best now to protect these surviving children, how to make sure that their, their childhoods are not overly damaged by this awful experience, and yet we have clearly, it seems pretty clear, doesn't it, at this stage, you know, a, a perpetrator who himself has had, for whatever reason, a damaged childhood. I don't think we know the full facts behind what caused the perpetrator to, to inflict um, this event. It would be useful to understand, and it's unfortunate that maybe we weren't able to intervene before the event happened, but for the children who have been affected, we need to be able to hold their experience and manage it for them, give them the right tools to be supported. For the very young children, we'd be taking a very much a narrative approach, a storytelling approach. For the older children, those between, say, five and eight, also a storytelling approach and narrative approach with some behavioural aspects to it. And then with the slightly older children, we're taking more of a cognitive behavioural therapy approach, so a traditional approach that we might use for adults as well. So the, the, the treatment needs to be really much tapered for the age of the child and initially managed well by the families. The children will most likely have an initial acute stress reaction approach, so a traumatic reaction a normal reaction to an abnormal event, and so it does need to be normalised. That it's okay to have these thoughts and these feelings, but actually the world is safe, difficult events can happen, but we're providing the safety for you, we're listening to the child, we're listening to the experiences, making sure that they're loved, we're watching TV with them, we're really supporting them through this event. If their experiences, if their difficulties carry on over the longer term, say over months, then we need to offer more direct support, either through groups or individual. And there's also the risk of a delayed response. Even if they're coping now, over the longer term, they might not be coping. There might be a certain trigger that might make them re-experience the event.